row. I need you guys to help us out. You guys got here early and picked the best seat. So in case a 400 pound guy comes toppling at you, I don't want them to smash the chair. So could you guys just reach out and grab them for us? Okay. <laughs> so thanks. In the front row, I need you guys to help us out and catch them if they fall. Also, people in the first two or three rows, just like in SeaWorld, you may get wet with sweat. So watch out. That's why you get the, pre the primo, seat, primo seats there, all right. Let's go over some of the basic rules of sumo. First, we're going to do the kinjite, or the illegal moves. So we always want to bow before and after every match to show respect. Now, these are the forbidden techniques. First of all, though, it's okay to take an open palm and slap your opponent. That's okay. You can slap him upside the head. But no punching. <laughs> no boxing, no punching. All right. Like I said, though, slapping is perfectly legal. But you cannot poke the eyes. All right, thank you. Now, it's okay in sumo to trip your opponent with a leg sweep. You can do a side sweep and trip, but no kicking. Kicking is not recommended, and it's forbidden, thank you. Now, in sumo, it's very important to grab the mawashi or the belt. You want to grab your opponent's mawashi anywhere around the waist, all right? But you cannot grab the groin area. That's a no-no. It's also illegal to grab the rear. Although you seem to like that part. To make sure we don't have any wardrobe malfunctions. <laughs> there we go, looking sharp. Now, you seriously do want to grab the boss here, the belt. You want to collide and grab the belt to get leverage on your opponent. So you want to pull the mawashi, you can pull it and maneuver your opponent, but you cannot pull the hair. <laughs> All right, let's give a big hand for Biamba and Kelly. So you understand the kinji day or the forbidden techniques. We just saw the basic kinji day. We're going to show you now a few of the more popular kimari day, which are the winning techniques. There are 82 different kimari day or winning techniques in sumo. We're going to show you just a few of the most popular ones. So first of all, before every match, they do a ritual. They're going to bow squat down for chili chosen. They put the hands together, do a big clap, and show they have no weapons under their arms. I want you guys to help us out. We're gonna do it again slowly. Everybody, you're gonna do an eight count with us in Japanese. You ready? Here we go. Ich, ni, san, shi, go, rok, shich, hach. Good job. Did you get all the moves? It's gonna be a test later. Alright, we'll see. Now, a few of the popular Kimari Day. First of all, we're going to show you, um, well, let's show you first how to win so you guys understand how to win. So basically, to win in sumo, you need to either push your opponent out of the ring, if he steps out, he loses, or push your opponent down, if you touch the ground with any part of the body besides the soles of the feet, you lose. So if your knee goes down, your finger goes down, you lose. In other words, to win, you have to push your opponent down or out. You guys understand? More than 10% of you. Very good. All right. Very good, Otakon Vegas. By the way, I want to thank you guys again, Otakon Vegas, for having us. I want to give a special shout out to the guy who actually brought us here and invited us, Andy Earnhardt. Stand up for a second. I was going to bring him in here no matter what, but he says he has a back injury. I don't know if I believe it. I, I think he's not allowed. <laughs> All right, he's not allowed. Now, let's show you a few of the uh, Kimari Day or winning techniques. First of all, we're going to show you a frontal push out. This is just like in football. Everyone start, try saying it Oshidashi. Oshidashi. Frontal push out. <laughs> I told you to catch him. Okay, good job, good job. All right. 
No, good job, good job. All right, let's show you a similar technique. This is going to be a frontal force out where they lock up on the belt and force the opponent out. Everyone try saying Yori Kitty. Yori Kitty. No, 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 not Hara Kitty. <laughs> Yori Kitty. Here we go. Frontal force out. There we go, Yori Kitty. Anybody want to see a one second match? Yeah! Well, you're in luck because we're about to do one. So, this is Hatakikomi. Hatakikomi, which is a sidestep technique. It's like a bullfighter dodging a bull. Don't blink. Oh! Okay. Somehow I knew you were going to say that. All right. Anybody want to see a throwdown? Yeah! Wow, we're going to do that too. All right. Let's watch an outside belt throw. Grabbing the belt on the outside and flipping the opponent. Everyone say, Uwatenage. Uwatenage. Here we go. Watch him grab the belt and flip his opponent. here. They're cushioning the fall. Alright, and finally, let's do one more throw, this time without grabbing the belt. We're going to do an underarm throw, or squilage. Squilage. One more throw. Thanks again to Biamba and Kelly. Yeah. Alright folks, we're going to give them a breather for one minute to get psyched up for the real matches. Oh, and by the way, I didn't introduce myself. My name's Andrew. I'm director of USA Sumo on these events. Great to be here at Otakon Vegas. Thanks. Yeah! Let's hear it for Otakon Vegas. Now, folks, uh, in case you weren't at the earlier show, we're going to do a series of five matches, all right? And every show is different. Sometimes the record might be 5-0, and oh, could be 4-1, and 3-2. and two. We never know who's going to win which matches. Sometimes you might see a sumo wrestler flying out in this direction. Watch your camera there. Sometimes in this direction. So be ready for anything. We're going to do a series of five matches. When we're done with that, we have one special surprise at the very end. And after that, keep in mind, when we're done in this room, you guys can go over to Sunset 4, which is where the sumo wrestlers will be stationed, and you can get an autograph and a photograph with these guys, if you so choose. Alright, are you guys ready for match number one? Yeah! Feel free to cheer out your favorite, Yamba from Mongolia, Kelly from USA. Kelly is the five-time U.S. sumo champion. Biamba is the four-time world sumo champion. Kelly destroys everyone in this country, but again, he's going against someone who's four-time world champion. So if anyone can even beat Biamba like 5% of the time, it's a miracle. So let's give these guys our support. Here we go. We're going to go down one time for a practice touch here. Touch the ground one time. When they come back up and go down the next time, the match will begin. Kelly at 430 pounds, Biamba at 370 pounds, 800 pound collision coming right up. Adush! Let's hear it, folks. about sumo or for the wrestlers. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, 
Yes, here we go. Uh, how much do you guys eat every day? Okay, so, um, you know, they're not currently in Japanese Pro Sumo, which has a very specific regimen. So both of these guys can kind of choose their diet, and I know them both very well. They both eat pretty healthy food. It's not some ridiculous quantity. It's maybe double what a typical person eats, making Vegas a perfect city for them to be in. But I will mention that when Bianco was in professional sumo in Japan, his daily regimen and the regimen of virtually all the pro sumo wrestlers was the same every day, year in and year out. He would wake up every morning at like 5 a.m. He would train the entire morning on an empty stomach. So he'd train for five hours straight in the morning. No food, lose about 10 or 15 pounds of sweat, eat his first big meal for lunch, take a nap, train a little more or rest, have a big dinner and sleep. And those two big meals, the lunch and the dinner that they would eat in pro sumo, normally consist of what's called chunkalabe. And chunkalabe is like a sumo stew. It's actually a very healthy food with lots of meat, vegetables, fish, and plenty of bowls of rice to top it off to keep the weight on. So it's a really nutritious food. They just eat a lot of it to recover and maintain the weight. Good. Any other questions? Yes. This is entirely random, and I hope it doesn't offend you. Um, I noticed that one has chest hair and one doesn't. I'm assuming it's due to um, normal body. But does that affect anything that happens during the match? She's asking about the amount of body hair that they respectively have. And all I can say is it's genetics. And I don't think the quantity of hair on your body is going to affect your performance very much in sumo. I will say, though, that in professional sumo, the pro sumo nichi uh, have a top knot. They grow their hair very long, like in a ponytail. Yeah, I know you asked about chest hair, and like I said, it has almost no effect. It has no effect on the match. Does it feel uncomfortable, she said? I don't think so. Uh, but just to elaborate on your question, uh, in pro sumo, they grow the hair very long and it's tied up in a, in a mage or a top knot. And there is a symbolic significance to the mage based on traditional Japanese culture and hair. But it also does have a slight practical significance because if you smash heads with your opponent head on, you might get a little bit of cushioning from this big top knot. And one other interesting note is you must have that mage in order to compete. So when pro sumo wrestlers retire, they have a ceremony in Dabachiki where they cut the hair. Bianba used to have that long hair in pro sumo. Um, but if someone is balding enough and they cannot put the top knot up, they have to retire. Interesting note in pro sumo. All right, one other question before match number two. Over here, whoa, we got a lot of questions. Uh, I noticed on the video that you guys showed earlier that there were some female sumo wrestlers, and I've never heard of that before. Um, is that something that we just do in the U.S., or what's the history behind that? Okay, great question. So in Japanese pro sumo, it's only men in professional sumo. In recent decades, there's been a push to make sumo an Olympic sport. And one of the criteria is, number one, to create weight classes, lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight, and also to create sumo for both genders, men and women. And so not in pro sumo in Japan, but at an amateur level all around the world, there are both men's and women's divisions. So you might have a bright future potentially in a sport of sumo. All right, let's do match number two. We'll take more questions after that. Again, folks, you can also cheer out USA, you or Mongolia, Mongolia.
to clarify, the referee, in this case me, must make a call. From my point of view, they both fell out at about the same time. However, the rule is, if one guy is clearly on top of the other, and the other is underneath him, the guy underneath will lose. That's why I call that one for Kelly. <laughs> USA. Right. Um, however, however, normally the referee's decision is not final. Normally in sumo there are five shimpong or sideline judges. If any of those judges want to dispute the call or they want to review the call, they raise their hands, the five judges and the referee would have a conference here, and there are three potential outcomes. They could potentially uphold the call, they could overturn the call, or they could call for a rematch if it really, really was a tie. But from my perspective, Kelly was clearly on top as they fell out at the same time. Oh, yeah. Bianca says he jumped. Do we, have, wait, do we have a video over here? <laughs> Did you get the edge of the ring in your video? Okay, here we go. You have a video. <laughs> Anyways, this is rare that we do this. Bianca hates to lose. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, technical difficulties, here we go. Now, while we're reviewing this, in pro sumo, there actually is an instant replay. It's not down by the ring, but the head judge has an earphone. And there's a guy up in the booth who reports to the head judge what he is seeing. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, let's review it here. I'll have a few other assistants with me. Jeff, you be on our team here. Okay. This rarely happens, guys. You're in for an amazing instant replay. Oh, it's going to take another 30 seconds. <laughs> Hold your breath, please. <laughs> now, seriously, Bianca hates to lose. He almost never loses. This is an incredibly rare occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the match is about to begin. I'll talk you through what I'm seeing. They collide. Bianca gets under him and spins him around. Kelly's at the edge of the ring. They pivot. People are cheering USA. <laughs> Bianca's trying to trip him. Uh oh, almost to the moment of truth, guys. Keep holding your breath. All right, I'm watching the feet. Ooh, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> After the conference is over, the two wrestlers come back, and we're going to give the results. This is what happens in sumo. After they do the conference, they're called back again. And in this case, in this case, I'm going to call Purinaush or a rematch. The reason, the reason is, in the video, as Kelly was falling, Bianca was falling too, but Bianca's foot was on the edge and his other foot was in the air as Kelly fell. Kelly might have even hit a split second before, no. but <laughs> if there were other judges there, it's likely that would have been called Torinaoshi or rematch. Here we go, guys. Rematch or match for the tournament.
soon there seem to be more converts to Mongolia. <laughs> All right, any other questions, folks? Yes? Just curious, what's been the heaviest sumo wrestler? Like how much? Or how much they weigh? The heaviest sumo wrestler. The question is, who was the heaviest sumo wrestler? In Japanese professional sumo, uh, this is in pro sumo in Osamo, the heaviest professional sumo wrestler, wrestler was Ponishiki. It was Hawaiian horn. He was about 630 pounds at his prime. The heaviest Japanese national, a Japanese sumo wrestler, was a guy that I just brought with us on the tour last year. I brought him from Japan, Yamamoto Yama, who is, at his peak, was just barely a donut under, under 600. Um, and actually, in amateur sumo, in uh, international sumo, not the pros in Japan, there was an American guy, Manny Arbro, at his prime was about 770 pounds. He never competed in pro sumo in Japan. I actually had a match with him three years ago at the U.S. National Championship. I lost, but I stayed in there for 30 seconds, running away from him. <laughs> no, he, he really, he, at that time he wasn't 770, he was about 700. Yeah. But you know what, size is not such a big factor. A guy like Biamba is 370. Just a few months ago, he won his fourth World Sumo Champion title. He took down guys who were like 500 plus pounds. It's really much more about agility and balance and staying low. All right, any other questions? Yes. When a sumo wrestler retires, do they keep the weight or do they just start dying and lose it? Okay, do sumo wrestlers retain their weight post-retirement? You know, it really depends. Generally, a lot of those sumo wrestlers lose a little bit of weight, but if they're in good shape to begin with, they're not used to losing a lot of fat. They're losing a little fat, a little muscle. You know, um, all right, I know he hates this, but you guys cheer for Bianca to come up here. Come up here. I want to mention, he's about 370 pounds right now. Get in the spotlight there. He's He's about 370 pounds right now. When he was in pro sumo at his, at his top weight in pro sumo of 350, they measured his body fat percentage in pro sumo at about 11%. So he's all muscle. Take a look at his chest, guys. Watch his chest. <laughs> he means his body fat percentage is a little bit higher now, but still. When he retires, I think he might lose a little weight, but not much, because he's in great shape. Kelly, ever since I've known him for about 13 years, he could exercise and swim 10 hours, he could run marathons, he could do nothing. He never changes. He's always about 440 like that. He's in great shape if he runs marathons. But typically, pro sumo wrestlers, when they retire, sure, they lose a little weight, muscle as well, because they're not training. One more question before match number three, in the back. What is the least a sumo wrestler can weigh? Great question. We have the maximum and the minimum. Um, so in Japanese professional sumo, there is a requirement to join pro sumo. You must weigh at least 75 kilograms, which is about 165 pounds. So I would not qualify, unfortunately. Um, there have been guys in Japan who are, let's say, 150, and they just drink gallons of water, by the way, and just so they can join at 165 pounds. Now, in international sumo, like I said, there's weight classes now on the amateur level, lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight, and you could be any height, weight, age to compete on an amateur level. Okay? Let's do match number three. Yeah! At Otakon Vegas, here we go. Folks, feel free to help these guys out. They may uh, have lost their concentration. You need to scream out your amateur advice for them, like grab the belt or trip him, slap him in the face. What, what do you want to say? Match 
match number three. So far, Bianca is 2-0. Oh. Oh, the whoosh! So, for example, even though Bianca was Mongolian born, when he entered professional sumo, instead of the name Yabba Jabba they gave him the shkona or fighting name of Aishochi. Um, usually, these names are very, how can I say, not exactly generic, but they mostly have words like Yama or Umi, which is like mountain or ocean, or, you know, these momentous sounding names to kind of give you strength and inspiration. Um, I mean, you've heard of, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the heaviest Japanese pro sumo wrestler, Yamamoto Yama. He has Yama, which means mountain, twice in his name, which sounds redundant, but it's kind of an exaggerated, poetic feeling in terms of the pro sumo fighting names they're given. Okay, great. Any other quick questions? Yeah, I was wondering. Um Besides running and swimming, do they do any other types of workouts like lift weights and other types of, uh, any type of weight? Okay, well when you say they, I've never heard of any other sumo wrestlers who run marathons or go swimming. Kelly's the only one. Okay, <laughs> so he's a unique special. <laughs> Kelly truly is a unique specimen on this planet. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. Really. Now, in terms of the workout, you saw earlier an abbreviated version. So you saw the guys earlier, they're doing the, the sho, you know, the, this one for an hour every morning. And they're doing the flexibility, those exercises. They're doing the suryashi, moving the feet. So they do hours of the basics like that. They might do some sparring. This is in Japanese pro sumo. They might do like that pole, like smashing a pole with their hands to build up that pushing strength. And in recent decades in Japanese pro sumo, they have added weight training to some degree, but they don't do maximum lift because they don't want the muscle to tighten up. So they do kind of mid-level weights, but high reps because they want to have that repetition of pushing and thrusting non-stop against an opponent. That being said, even though they usually don't max out, I just talked to Bianca two months ago, he told me he was in the gym, he did a leg press, like a squat, but you know, the machine where you press. He leg pressed about 1,500 pounds. So there is some weight training involved, and many sumo wrestlers, but not all, do some form of weight training. One last question before match number four. Oh, Calvin, okay, you do that. Um, so in females, female wrestling, like, do their breasts, like, alter, like, their breathing techniques? And, like, I would just, like, assume that they wear bras or whatever, so 
In case you guys didn't hear that, her question was, in amateur female sumo wrestling, uh, does, the, does the fact that they have breasts affect the techniques? Is that what you said? Um, and in terms of what they wear, well, basically, I think the techniques are very similar, really. I mean, I mean, like in the NBA versus the WNBA, there's probably not as much dunking in the WNBA. Just like in women's sumo at an amateur level, there's probably not as much of the body slamming like you saw Galba do. But practically speaking, most of the actual techniques are the same. And in terms of your question about attire, in amateur sumo, sorry to disappoint the gentleman, but women wear a leotard that covers their torso, rear, and thigh. So uh, hopefully that one. <laughs> Again, gentlemen, it's not my call, but uh, that's the rule. Thanks. Oh, and we have one more. He was going to ask the same question about women's attire. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> you said you had a record of 41. Who had he? Okay, I mentioned earlier in Bianca's introduction that at the tournament that we produced, the one that I produced in Los Angeles, he's won that, the gold medal, for seven years in a row. You saw the videos, and that's from that tournament. Bianca had a cumulative record in seven years of 68 wins and one loss. And that one loss occurred against this gargantuan guy from Bulgaria. And Bianca fought him four times over the years at the US Supreme Open. Bianca won three out of four, but even the best lose once in a blue moon. Which brings us to match number four. Let's see if the best... Let's see if the best will lose this one rare time. Come on, Alex! Come on! USA! 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 And more specifically, Kelly is from Idaho. Potato Potato! And Idaho is next to Nevada, guys, so there you go. Match number four. Will Bialma continue undefeated, or will Kelly pull off at least one upset, which he almost did in match number two? Yama in the black, Kelly in the red, 430 pounds versus 370. Come on, the mother. Shh. Oh, I give up here. No, this is actually the 
bit size. But there's a bunch of these. And if you guys ask them, I'm sure we'll be happy to sign these for you as well. And finally, the most prized possession you can get from a sumo wrestler in Japan. This is a very special Japanese item that uh, is very highly sought after from pro sumo wrestlers is what is called a tegata. So the tegata is a handprint, all right? And these two guys each made these tegata themselves by hand. I think I'll leave now. Uh, no, but seriously, these each are unique. They're like snowflakes, so no two are the same. It's not by a machine. They make these one by one. So if you have one, it's different from everybody else's. And they're signed either by Biombo for his or Kelly for his. If you get one of these as well, they'll customize it with your name or a message if you like as well. So you can meet the guys when we're done. Any final questions before the fifth and final match? All right, we'll go around the circle here. Yes. Why do they slap their belt? There's no particular requirement or protocol to slap the belt. I mean, you see them sometimes doing this. You know, basically, a lot, a lot of sumo wrestlers before a match, you're bracing for impact. So they might slap their belt, or they might just basically try to, you know, brace themselves for the attack. Also, normally in pro sumo, you're throwing salt into the ring. So by doing this, you would release the residual grains of salt that are adhering to your hand. All right, yes. So her question is, what is a really bad wardrobe malfunction that you'll see in sumo? Um, I have never seen one like, I tell you what, um, let me bring a model. Kelly, can you be our supermodel? He, 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 might, he might not be a supermodel, but he's a supersized model. Kelly, show, the, show this nice lady your better side, please. No, no, turn around. So as you can see, as you can see, this is tied in a double knot. You can see it's circled around twice. Very secure. Let's show these folks over here. Double knot. You guys see that? It's a secure double knot. It shouldn't come off. Let's hear it for Kelly as our director. That is a really good question, though, because, like I said, I've seen tens of thousands, literally, of sumo matches in practice and tournaments on video, tournaments all over. And I've never, ever seen the belt and washi come off. Historically, supposedly, it happened a couple times, but I think it might be decades before it would even happen once. The rule, though, is just in case, if your mawashi, if your belt comes off during the match, if you lose it, you automatically lose the match. And you also might be very embarrassed or proud, as the case may be. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, we had one or two more here, yes. Okay, great. Two-part question. One is, do you get rashes with the sashes? I like your eloquence. Um, no, basically, these are very comfortable. What they're wearing is, is simple cotton. So it's actually just cotton. It's thick cotton. Very comfortable, very flexible. You can wear it for hours, and I've never heard of someone really having much of a problem. Um, normally, in amateur sumo around the world, as well as 90% of Japanese pro sumo, they wear a cotton mawashi. Normally, it's black or white. Kelly is a unique fellow. <laughs> um, but in the highest division of Japanese pro sumo, the top two divisions actually, the most elite 72 uh, bikshi or pro sumo wrestlers, they get, when they attain that rank, they get specially made mawashis or belts, not of cotton, but of the finest silk that might be about $10,000 or $20,000 each. So they get special belts, and they're usually bright colors, green or blue, red, purple, whatever. They're very, very prized items. Okay, we have one other question. You again. If you forgot what you were going to ask, then you can ask us when you get your autographs back there. Okay. Anybody else with a final question? Yes. Oh, what did you do? Well, I'm interested in like uh, whether anyone of 
place you had uh, ever fought other fighting stars? Like, like what evil that did in Street <laughs> Okay, are you asking if they used the art of sumo versus somebody else using like karate or wrestling or something like that? Uh, I don't think they've ever been in street fights. Although, I'm not sure about the other <laughs> But I will say that, like I mentioned in the introduction, when Biombo was a kid in Mongolia, he practiced other forms of wrestling, and by the time he was 15, he was already the national junior champion judo, sambo, and Mongolian wrestling. So he has great experience in grappling. Kelly didn't know about sumo until he was much older, but he was actually a scholarship athlete in college. In high school and college, he wrestled and played football. And in his late 20s was when he first found out about sumo, and he transitioned into that. So both these guys have extensive background in other sports. So Kelly was like, football and wrestling, sumo, marathons, long distance swimming. I don't know what this is. All right, give me one last question. So, uh, in baseball in the United States, we've got the 1919 Black Sox, which no one has ever forgotten. It's a major scandal. Is there any major scandal that has happened in professional sumo, match fixing, or so forth, that is always remembered? Okay, she said that there's the 1919 Black Sox who fixed the game in baseball. Is there something similar in sumo in terms of match fixing? Well, in Otokon, Vegas, we said... <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you know, all I can say is that there, just like in any professional sport, there are allegations of match fixing or doping or cheating of some form. You know, in baseball, there's allegations of, like you said, you know, fixing a game um, of drug use. Um, Lance Armstrong, NBA officials rigging the point spread on games, things like that. So there's allegations in any pro sport, and there definitely are allegations in pro sumo of people fixing matches or doing illegal. Uh, arrangements. Um, I can't really answer the veracity of those claims, but let's just say that like any pro sport, there's always going to be aspects like that, but and sumo's no different. But by and large, I think, you know, the guys are doing real fights, and especially on the international level, where they don't have a lot at stake in terms of money, they're doing it for the love of the sport, they're really going at it 100% because they want to win. You saw how pissed the upper was when he fought, he might have lost that one. He did lose it. <laughs> Let's resolve this once and for all with match number five. This is it, folks. This is the final match of the final show at 2014 Otakon Vegas. Kelly or Biamba? Will Biamba go undefeated or will Kelly pull off one upset victory? What will it be? Kelly! 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 These guys have fought hundreds and hundreds of times in the last year alone. Thousands of times over the last decade. In real tournaments, demos, competitions all over the world. Who will come out today in the final match in Otakon Vegas? Rush!
back to that room for the photos and autographs, but we have one last surprise for you, so don't go anywhere. This is going to be quite a lot of fun. You just saw the champions going head to head. Yeah, don't worry, we're going to do it right now. You saw the champions going head to head. We're now going to grab, we can only take a very, very, very few, like a handful of audience members to challenge these guys. I have to. Okay, there's certain people I am required to choose from Otakon. If you give me all those chips, then. Um, so, come on over, one. Like two. Like two, yeah. Okay, you were waiting to go. Come on over, you were waiting for the morning show. I go over your head. Take off your shoes, Mark. If I call you, take off your shoes. Andrew! USA! USA! Okay, you two. And then wait, I gotta get one more from Oakland. Where is Yeah. Right here. Come on over. That's all I can take. That's all I can take. Except, you wanna do it? The smallest guy here? Give me a copy of your life insurance, please. She says she has an ice pack on standby. Right. Okay, so it looks like we have our seven, I mean eight, eight volunteers. Excuse me. I used the wrong word there, didn't I? All right. Seven and a half. Thank you. All right, folks. So, listen, I don't want you guys to get hurt, so I want to show you, actually, let's see, we have six and a half, there we go. I want to show you a few tips, the do's and don'ts of sumo, okay? So, um, let, let me see if I can get uh, Biombo to help me out here. What you don't want to do in sumo is don't just stand there or you're going to get blasted. You have to move and you have to go forward. You guys got that? Yep. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show them what to do, all right? Yeah, I was going to help me. A little bit slower. Normally I get standing ovations when I take off my jacket. Come on, guys. All right. Okay. All right. You made me feel better. All right. So this is what you don't want to do. Don't just stand there like I'm about to do or you might get hurt. Mike. 
Mike, what's your sports and martial arts experience? Uh, let's see. Uh, That's enough. <laughs> played a little football, a little soccer. Um, I'm terribly out of shape, so let's do this. All right. Who are you in the face, Mike? What's that? Who is your opponent? I get to choose. Okay, uh, I choose Kelly. <laughs> Folks, let's go over there, Mike. Assume the position. Do what he does. Kelly is the five-time U.S. sumo champion. Mike used to play a little of football and soccer. Mike is smiling, huh? Let's hear it for Mike. Fist down and I'll give the command. Ready? And look at it! Come on, Mike! <laughs> Kelly says he'll give you one more chance. <laughs> I'm 
to mention that Mark Saxon. Oh yeah! <laughs> All right, well, this time I think it can take... Oh, hold on, Kelly. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 
you know who knows how to fall properly. <laughs> all right, let's give a big hand to all our volunteers. You guys have been an amazing audience. Remember, in just a couple minutes, you are going to go to Sunset 4. There's going to be a little line. Just make a line. You can get a photo with these guys, a free autograph, and if you want to get some of the items, they'll autograph them as well. Once again, we really appreciate Otakon. Thank you, guys. Let's hear it for Otakon Vegas. Oh, when the foot goes down, you say your show. Last two. Here we go. Everybody. Yeah.